So an overview would be like this. In the past, the two parents on average got six children. The reason the population was not growing here from the year 2000, from the year, you know, when we started agriculture way back then, 5,000 years ago, it took 5,000 years to go from 10 million to 1 billion. This is 1 billion here. It is because one, two, three, four died sadly before growing up to have children themselves. The past was ugly. Human beings have never, ever lived in ecological balance with nature. That's a myth. People have been dying in ecological balance with nature. It's due to high and tragic death rates of children and young people that there's been a balance between human and nature. And that's ugly, and people hated it. And they wanted their children to survive. And after the Industrial Revolution, we got soap industrially produced soap, we got piped water, and we got some medical actions, you know, and instead of four dying, four survived and two died. And that caused the growth of the population. You see, two parents, four children, doubling in one generation. 25 years, one billion to two billions. 25 years more, two billion to four billion. And there we went to seven billion people. And this is what many say, oh, population explosion, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but it was inevitable. We didn't want kids to continue to die. And people would not apply family planning until they saw their kids surviving. Almost the death rate has to fall before the birth rate is falling. Huh? And, and, and then many call this exponential growth. Have you heard the term exponential growth? This is exponential, faster and faster. Since 1960, we have had no exponential growth whatsoever. We've had an absolutely linear growth. And for you, those of you doing math, you know that linear growth means that the interest rate is falling every year. We added 1 billion in 14 years, 1 billion in 14 years, 1 billion in 14 years. That means the adding of billions did not become faster and faster. But there's so much crap written and said about population growth. So they just put in these X's, explosion, exponentially. And you argue for things based on scare, trying to scare people, eh, instead of making them understand. Here, now, we have a situation where we will add another 4 billion in spite of already having reached the new balance. This is strange. Why will we add 4 billion when the number of children have stopped increasing? Huh? It's strange. This one, the balance was controlled by death. It was ugly and unacceptable. People would never accept that. They tried their best. This balance, is controlled by love, by being able to disentangle sexuality and reproduction. And some religious leaders haven't got it yet. We try to make it very simple to understand. Th this is a good thing. It's a good thing that you can separate those two. Huh? And, and, and why will it be 11 billion? Well, I have some more improved educational material from Gapminder here. I brought these blocks here. Imagine that this is one billion people. You can see here, yeah, one billion people. And these ones are children below 15. Here's the age. See, they are below 15. These are the children. There are two billion in the world. Next age group, 15 to 30, they are also almost two billion. I'm going to simplify. Not falsify, but simplify, really. It's actually 1.8 or something here, but I say 2 billion. Next group, I say it's 1 billion. It's actually 1.4 something. But there are less here. Next group, 45 to 60, 1 billion. Almost precisely 1 billion. Then it's my group, 60 years and older, and we are not really 1 billion, but almost. And we take the help by some really old people who join our group here. Huh? So we have, this is the world population today. This is the world, the composition of the world population. You could call it a population pyramid. More in the base than up here. Now, many think that the reason these are missing is because they died. No, no. 
Some are missing because they died. Most are missing because they were never born. Because back then, 30 to 60 years ago, there were fewer people born because there were fewer women. Then more and more survived, and then we got this situation. Now, the number of children will not increase. These two billions will remain two billions for the rest of this century. And the 71 year of life expectancy won't increase that much. So let's assume that that stays the same. So if number of children stays the same, length of life stays the same, what will happen? Because there are some people telling me the environmental problems are so severe, so we have to stop world population below 10 billion. Aha, is that so? Have you studied demography? I said, yes, 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 we have to stop it. No, you can't, I said. And I will show you now why you can't stop it below 10. Because imagine, let's look at, let's look at my group. What happened to people like me? Do you know that? No one has a family that are undertakers. They die. We die. The old people die. Some think we become angels. Some think we just disappear. Anyhow, they disappear. What happens to the rest of you? You grow older. You grow older and older and older. And 15 years from now, you have changed age group. And then other children come and replace you down there. Can you see? Same amount of children as I showed you. Then the old die. The rest grow older and older and older and get the same amount of children. 30 years from now. Then the old die. It's not so difficult. You get it now. Huh? They die. The rest grow older and older and older. And here they are. I mean, this, this is, you started down there, most of you students, one, two, three, this is when you are up here. You are 60 years old, you become like me. Uh, you see, when you are like me, it's filled up to here. And we have three billion more. You saw the magic? Without increasing the number of children, without increasing the length of life, we got three billion more. I'll do it once more. Because you're in doubt. There's someone think here I made this up, you know, in some way. The old die, the rest grow older, and they get children. The old die, the rest grow older, they get children. The old die, the rest grow older, they get children. And there you are. Inevitably, you will have three billion more people. Because death starts up here at this age. Relatively few die here. Of 135 million children born, Six million die every year. It's down to 5%. That's mainly down here, there are deaths. Then death rate is relatively low all the way up here because life expectancy is 71. Now, in spite of, instead of getting shorter life, what we think is that we will get longer life and we think we will get one billion more up there. Of course, I'm very happy of that. That will give me 15 years more to follow statistics, you know. So, now, some people just wrote in the Swedish newspaper and criticized me and said, we must be less than 10 billion. But who should we take away? Which one do they want to remove? <laughs> yeah, should we let, you know, they can <laughs> take away the old? But there's still 10 billion. There's still 10 billion. You want to take more? Can you kill these two? No, say no, for God's sake, it's forbidden. <laughs> Don't be in doubt. It's absolutely forbidden. Thou shalt not kill. Haven't you read the Bible? Huh? <laughs> so what shall you do? What shall you do? Huh? I think you will have to do it like this. You have to force people to just have one child. Do you see? If you do like Mao Zedong, they'd say, you introduce one child friend. It's very delicate. You have to be careful. If they did it like this, then they can get 8 billion. You think people voluntarily will go for one child? No, I suggested to the leader of the Swedish Environmental Party, who argued at one time and said that, that, you know, we should have less people in the world. I said, I, and we talked with her, and I said, yeah, why don't you start with Sweden then? Because we are one of the rich countries that increase the number of children per woman. 
It's quite easy. You just take away the child allowances, the subsidies for the daycare center, and you put in school fees. Three simple measures as a politician, the number of children per woman in Sweden will drop from 2 to 1.5. Of course, you will lose the next election and you have to make a coup d'etat, you know, and become dictator. <laughs> it's very strange how serious people can suggest this. Now, I share the concern about the environment. I share the concern about elephants and rhinos. I share more than anyone else the concern about the climate. But I ain't going to kill people to achieve it. I ain't going to force people to get sterilized. I ain't going to become Mao Zedong. Because it won't work. People won't accept it. Eh? They won't accept it. And, and, and here you can see, so I think we will have to... Oh yes, this is like... Oh! You can't, you can't mix up with population like that. It's very dangerous. You have to be careful with people. Eh? You have to be very careful with people so they can live decent their life. I think the solution for the world lies in respecting people, you know, and seeing what it is. And that's not difficult. We know everyone should have access to contraceptives everywhere, but not be forced. Because if you force people, it will backfire. And we know that the poorest in Africa, they will not use contraceptive as long as they see their children die, as long as they don't have a school in the village, as long as they need their children for work. Malala said they don't go to school because they have to work to support their family. And as long as things are like this, they want their kids. And then some want their kid a little too long, many kids, because some men are proud because I made so many children. Huh? And when men think that their pride is having seven, eight, nine children instead of how well their children are doing. That's old-fashioned, patriarchal thinking. Men have to think my pride is how well my children are doing, how happy they are in life. That's my pride. And when you get that attitude change, you have to get it's not only providing services. This is the number of births in the world. It has already happened. The number of births is not increasing any longer in the world. The adults are increasing. You get it now? You understand why these adults are adding? It's these three, just by the fill up, and it's this group here. But it's more to it. It's more to it. We have to go a little more into details. A little more into details. Look here. Now it's late in the evening, and I put a demanding explanation of demography here to you. Huh? Each doll here is 100 million now. These ones were thousand millions, one billion, thousand millions. No? Ten out of these dolls is one here. Eh? Down here I have, what is it, should be about 20 down there. These ones are Europeans' children, these are American children, these are African children, as many children in Africa as in the whole of the Americas and Europe together, and these are Asian children. And you can see that at the age between 15 and 30, then there are less Africans. Here's even less Africans. Here's very few Africans. So the African population is quite dramatic. It's still increasing the number of children. In Asia, they've stopped increasing. Remember the Asian curve? It was already down to two. Huh? So Asia is not increasing. Africa is at 4.5. They will continue to increase for another 30 years, more or less 30 years. So what happens here is the following. You know it now. The old dies, the rest grow older, and they have their children. Whoop! One more in Africa. One less in Asia. That's why the number of children doesn't increase. The increase of children in Africa is compensated by a decrease of children in Asia. And Europe. But Europe is so little, it doesn't matter much. They die, they grow older, and they get children. And one more in Africa. Out of, think like this, out of four children in China that pass their 15th birthday, three are replaced by a Chinese baby born. And one is replaced by a Nigerian baby born. That means that children, conceptually, are moving from Asia to Africa. Children in the world remain the same, but they are moving towards poverty. 
Because in poverty, the number of children increase. Where countries are more wealthy, the number decrease. That's why it's a good reason to support UNICEF. Huh? Children in the world need support. And here they die, they get older, and they get children, and they die, and they get older, and they get children. And this is the fill-up of adults. You remember the three billion I showed you here? These three billions is the same as that group there, when I make it in more detail. It's a fill-up of people, and that's why Africa will increase so much, and Asia will increase so much. Africa also increased here because of an increase of children, and Asia decreased down there. So, longer life. This one. I hope to be this one. I can follow statistics for 15 more years, you know, and see what happens. Eh? This we don't know. We don't know here. You see, if people want to decrease the number of people in the world, they think provide, prevent contraceptives in Africa. Yes, go for it. But don't think you can force poor women. Poor women are clever, otherwise they are dead. Don't think they are dumb. If they want many children, it's because they see their children dying, they need their kids to help them. If they get a better life, immediately they will ask, first for family planning, to space children, to wait for the next child, and then decide how many they will have. Huh? This is a new tool that Gapminder have made on our web page.